Hi everybody, welcome to a very, very, very special edition of Pop Dust Presents. We are on the West Coast this week with my very good friend Azra. What's up guys, hi. This is uh, the second time that we've uh, we've done an interview, and last time was in New York, mm -hmm. what, like a year ago? It was about a year ago, oh my god, time passed. And now we are in this awesome studio. Yes. Uh, how, how, did, how did we end up here? I don't know. We just dropped here from, I don't know, from the purple land, the from, lilac from, world. From lilac land. <laughs> um, so yeah, this studio, um, we're actually in North Hollywood, and this is where I actually worked on all of my new music, including the single Ooh. that we're going to, that I'm going to be releasing soon. So this is the Heavyweight Studio. Um, it used to be the Marvin Gaye Compound. Wow. So yeah, it's like, this place has like hella magic. Is there like a lightweight studio? Probably. This is, this is a heavyweight one though. The lightweight is on this the other is side. pro stuff. I mean, we got, yeah. there's a lava lamp over there. I'm not sure if people at home can see it, but you know, there, there's all sorts of things. It has like special powers yeah. when you stare at it for like a while. I've, I've been, I've been doing that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of lost in the trance. Um, so no, this is, this is awesome to see, uh, to be with you in your, uh, your 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 natural habitat yes. here. I'm so happy to be here too. <laughs> so okay, so the last time that uh, that we spoke, you know, you were promoting your EP mm -hmm. Freedom. Yes. And what's been going on since then? So much has been going on. Um, so I released my EP in March of last year, and then after that, I went on the High School Nation tour. And I opened for the Plain White Tees. Ooh. You, you know, hey there, Delilah. Yeah. yeah. So opened for them and then, like, got to perform in front of, like, hundreds of high school kids, which was, like, amazing because um, I love kids. Um, and then after that, I went on tour and performed at Pride. So I Whoa, went to perform at, like, nice. five different Pride festivals on the East Coast, and that was amazing, too. So, yeah, and then I've working on I've been working on new music, um, moved back to L.A., and just been living my life and working on the new stuff too. So that's been a long journey. Well, t so yeah. tell me a, a bit about the new material and for people that, you know, they if they knew the, the last EP or even if they didn't, what what sort of has changed and what has has stayed this, the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the new material is definitely different. Um, as far as the messaging goes, the message and like, um, you know, what I talk about and the concept behind it is very similar to the Freedom album. Very positive. Very, very positive. But it's like positive. It has that positive ending, but it also talks about like the dark side and like yeah. the negative side too about life because we all know life isn't all positive and yeah, flowers, it's a, it's right? A, yeah, it's a struggle. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but your music is encouraging to be yes, exactly. to get through the struggle. Yes, and it's all about like getting like the struggles and then turning that into like the positive. So you know it's cool. Um, so yeah, so the messaging is very similar. But then as far as the new music, it's um, it's more dancey and okay. it's more edgy and it kind of shows more about me. It, it's it kind of shows like a three one eighty angle like about me and my art and the person i am as an artist because i'm a dancer and i, I like to have fun to and i like to be weird so all that is kind of incorporated in the new stuff yeah, yeah I, I like having fun and stuff too <laughs> that, that's why we get along yeah exactly. we both, it, um it, so i was going to say you you as an artist mm -hmm. um i not don't mean to brag but i just got a little sneak peek of a music video that you might be having come out this summer mm -hmm. um, for the single Dimension. Yes. And uh, super cool. And the, the dance and the choreography in it is amazing. And I don't think Thank I realized you. that you did that because last time, you know, we, I think the, the Freedom EP was very, you know, like piano and vocal driven. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if we brought up the, you know, dance and, and, and fun yeah and <laughs> but it wasn't fun oh it was it was a ton of fun it was, it was yeah yeah um yeah definitely so yeah i'm i mean my background is dancing so i come from like hip-hop dancing so um funny story when i was young my mom actually enrolled me to like a ballet school 
and I took ballet. I was like doing the little, you know, pirouettes and everything like that. And I remember after a session, after like a ballet class, I came out and then I saw like a group of older kids like dancing to uh -huh. hip hop on the street. And I was just like, I want to do that. And ever since then, like, I've just been really inspired to dance hip hop and stuff. So I remember taking my ballet flats and then like giving it to my mom and being like, I don't want to do ballet anymore. I'm going to take it to the streets. And then my mom was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it to the streets. I'm gonna take it to the streets. So yeah, so that's always been a part of me. And um, I think with my last DP, that's a really good point. You brought that up. It was very focused on the actual message and like the vocals. Yeah. Piano. Because um, I love piano, piano songs, piano driven songs. Um, but I did recognize that like the dance aspect wasn't there. I'm like, hey, People like, like I dance. gotta exactly. I like to dance. You like to dance. I, I like to with dance. your sparkly I'm jacket. Not, not great at it. You'd think I'd be better with the amount of sparkles on my jacket. But hey. that's so <laughs> I don't I don't move much in the club, but it's still very very distracting. Mm -hmm. It just makes it pop. Yeah, yes. those people are like, eh, is, he, is he a good dancer or is he just really sparkly? <laughs> I don't know. Hey. But good okay, I love the idea that <laughs> like. <laughs> Your your story of uh, you know, getting in with a rough crowd in the streets it was like the kids are dancing, oh they're dancing in the streets, and Where then you turn now? in your ballet shoes like like a like a cop retiring, turning in their badge and their gun, giving hand in your ballet shoes, and you're like I'm done with this. Yeah. Taking it to the streets. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I said that to my parents, like my mom, and then I remember her face, and she was just like, oh, like what's hip hop. You know, because you're just like, it's like, you know, all she remember. And then I was like, no, you know what you see, like, you know, the singers and like the hip hop dancers are like pop and locking. And I was like super young. I was like five. So is there any hip hop funny. influence on the new album? Um, Definitely. There is. Okay. Because I didn't, I wasn't asked to do a feature. So I assumed, you know, this, it was a hip hop free zone, but perhaps, Well, how did you know, you know I wasn't going to ask in the future? Ooh. That's a good oh, point. Exactly. I haven't I haven't watched the future yeah. yet. Maybe you I'm need looking, to I... enter into the new dimension to Ooh. understand. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, hey, <laughs> I think I think that was an, a, a a promise. You know, if you say it on on the internet, you have to do it. <laughs> That's kind of how the internet works. Oh man, um, so much pressure. But yeah, I mean, yeah. It, so the 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 hip hop dance, I guess, is still a very big part. Of, of what you do yeah definitely and then um you mentioned the music video so music yeah. video for dimension it does have a lot of um hip-hop in it and uh there's really cool dance moves too really cool it's amazing i and can't there's wait glass for shattering and a desert and there is no i'm getting there <laughs> our producer is saying do not tell the people about the glass the glass does not shatter <laughs> And honestly, I wasn't, you know, it, it's it's yet to be seen um, what happens to the glass, if there is even any glass, you know? You're through, right, through the exactly. Glass. Yeah. My, you know, some people see the glass as half empty, but but you see it as half full. Half hella full, yeah. Half hella it, full. It was just full, like full of... Full, full, full of, of dance and love and positivity. Yeah. So what is the message in Dimension? So the message in Dimension is basically, so I think I talked about this with you last time you know, about a decade ago. <laughs> um, so I have this whole idea of like the sixth dimension, which is basically like, I like to say that I strive always to want to exist in the sixth dimension. And that dimension is a place where you don't really have an image, like you, you don't have anything that you're holding back on and you're kind of just free and you're free. You're going after what you want. You're not holding back and you're just expressing yourself and, and just being you, you know, and doing what you love. Um, and so that's kind of the idea of the dimension, the sixth dimension. The song basically talks about, you know, my struggle and, you know, I think people can relate to it as like an artist who had to kind of deal with a lot of societal expectations and things like, you know, working a day job, things like when you're growing up as a kid and you were told that you can't do something, even though you were meant to do something and you didn't understand why because ever since i was young i wanted to do music i i've always been a performer dancer singer you know actress doing musicals and just always wanting to just like inspire people and like connect people through you know just being fun like having fun on stage and kind of being like 
a performer, you know, performer clown, um, <laughs> if you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, right? Performers are in a way clowns, right? We create our own imaginative world in hopes to inspire and connect with people and entertain them. So, That's true. yeah, but um, so I struggled with that a lot because. That's all I wanted to do ever since I was young. Um, but there were so many different store, different, you know, incidences that came up throughout my life. Like when I was young, um, I remember I was casted into this musical, uh, this play, and I was asked to be the lead of the play. And then all of a sudden the actual, like the Sunday school teacher who was like the person coordinating the whole thing, she was like, she pulled me aside and I was like six years old and she was like, can you actually not be the lead because we want this other girl to have a chance? Um, but I want you to decide. And for me, I was like, I wanted this lead so bad and I practiced and I was like, I thought I was so good, but why is this teacher telling me that I can't be the, the lead? And I, you know, as a little kid, I feel like now it's be like, okay, like, you know, I, I feel like I'd, I'd ask the question like, Hey, what's up with that? But then when I was little, I was just like, I was just like, why can't I shine? Like why? And then this happened multiple times. And I think as a kid, like that kind of affected me at the time. I remember like taking a little walk <laughs> behind the church because there was yeah. like this grass area as a kid being like, do I have to give this part away? Like why? And it just like, I couldn't. Yeah, that was a weird existential thing for the, for, for a little it was, like, kid, it was, right? Like, yeah. Was, she was like, I. I can't tell it, technically take it away from you, so I want you to tell me that. Yeah, it, like it would have been easier if the teacher was like, "Hey, by the way, she's gonna be the lead instead." You know, you do this. You was know what I mean? Was there a reason? Like, was this was this person? Uh, I think the reason it? was um, my mom actually told me the reason was that the teacher felt pressure from the other girl's mom, wanting to. You know, it's it's political, yeah. I guess, even as kids. <laughs> but um but yeah and and you know things like that happen where um all I just all I wanted to do was just help people and perform and shine and there were many times when I felt like you teachers or people who are older than me just kind of trying to block that light and I think that's why and eventually as I you know as I grew up I realized you know that I need to stand up for myself because people who try to stop you from shining are always going to be there, you know, in life. And, you know, it's really up to you. Like you can't control them, but you can control yourself and, and how you respond to that. So what I learned over the years is like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to shine and I'm not going to be apologetic. I'm going to be unapologetic and I'm just going to go and do me and, you know, be respectful at the same, same time. But if I'm weird and crazy and I just want to do me, then that's what I'm going to do. So that was kind of the inspiration behind it to say, hey, you know, I know that all of us, we were going through different struggles and there's this whole pressure and expectation from the society to fit the mold, you know, work that nine to five job, you know, you need that. But I know from experience and from having a lot of friends who are also, you know, in nine to five jobs, you know, by choice or not by choice, maybe, um, and, and they all have different passions. You know, they yeah. have things that they love and they want to do. And the song is basically saying like, hey, let's find a different dimension together and we can actually exist there. And it doesn't have to be this like imaginative world. It can actually be, you know, right here. It can actually be reality. It can be where we are every day and we can create that together. I think that's a beautiful <laughs> idea. And I, I agree. Everybody should quit their jobs. I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> saying a couple weeks ago i was invited to perform at a charity show and it was for like an anti-bullying organization oh. and it was um at a festival called the peace and kindness festival and it was at a at a at a middle school so there were like 500 middle school kids and parents and teachers and like i, I, I think the principal was there too but you know i was doing my set and i was speaking in between and talking about like my experience you know growing up so they had a peace and kindness festival mm -hmm. at this at this middle school. They did not have that in my middle school. I they didn't have this that. This is in some my West Coast either. thing, I guess. Yeah. You know, anti bullying. In my school you got like extra credit, I think, for bullying. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my god. No, like same thing. Like when I was in high school, they didn't have that middle school either. And that's why I was so honored and like inspired to go perform and like be able to share the message of like, you know, be yourself, you know, speak against speak up in front of the bullies because I really think that 
what bullies are most scared of is actually saying no in front of them and like speaking up and saying you can't bully me like that's like the biggest weapon that's awesome you know um that you get to go around and inspire people Mm -hmm. and you said something about moving back to la Mm -hmm. What, what's 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 going on with migration yeah definitely so um so i was in la for about three years before last year um and then i moved to the east coast and that was when i was working on my freedom ep yeah um in new york and philadelphia and did all the pride festivals and stuff like that so i was there um just working on music and working on creative stuff and also dealing with like family yeah stuff as well um so then i was there for a year and then i moved back to la because you know la's i'm from california i grew up in norcal um and i've always wanted to back be back in california so i came back last year and i've just been loving it yeah yeah is it good you need to be in la too i like it i'm trying to pull all my friends from the east coast over to the west coast you know the thing is keep you guys here i i like it you know but i will say that I think I, I came to you from maybe nine miles away, and that was about like an hour drive. But yeah, it was a pretty right. it was a pretty drive. There was lots of mountains, uh-huh. and you know you don't get a lot of that in New York City. But I mean, I could get used to it. Mm-hmm. I, I dig the climate. Yeah. Uh, but, but did you enjoy the East Coast as well? I do enjoy the East Coast. I feel like I need a dose of East Coast every now and then. Yeah. East Coast dose. Exactly, definitely. Um, I actually went to college in Boston. So, you know, I spent a lot of time in the East Coast. Um, so I have a lot of memories and friends and family, too. So. I've got I've got tons of friends. Yeah, all over. I didn't know if maybe you were trying to, like, one-up me. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested because, you know, there's so many cool things going on with your career. And you've obviously lived uh, abroad. You... I guess grew up in Northern California. You were in school in Boston and have toured on the East Coast. Now you're in LA. Why LA specifically? Well, um, so I love well LA specifically because I think LA is a beautiful place to be, um, especially as a pop artist and especially as a, you know an entertainment professional. Um, you know, LA is full of like creative people. I feel like, you know, the moment I get out of, you know, the airport LAX, you just feel that creative energy that doesn't exist anywhere else, I feel personally. And um, I mean, other places have different flavors, but LA is just like, I feel like it has a perfect balance between, you know, the creatives to like food, you know, and and, and spirituality, because that's huge for me. Um, And then just like the glam, you know, and then there's like the down to earth. You know, there's like the Silver Lake, the Beverly Hills, the West Hollywood, there's North Hollywood, you know, there's so many flavors and I think LA has it all. So I, I'm very happy to be here. Um, Do you ever feel like mm-hmm. there's so many artists couldn't that couldn't one assume that that would make it difficult to, to stand out mm-hmm. if there's if it's very saturated? Mm-hmm. It sounds like that's not your experience. Right? No, I don't. I don't think so because I really believe that, you know, everybody's different, right? And everybody, every artist has like something to offer that's different than each other. Like you and I, you know, you're amazingly talented. Go on. Go on. (laughs) on. on. Um, So we all have different things to offer. And I think what's, LA is a, okay, so... The, like, what, 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 I know. So let me bring that. So what I said earlier about the great things about LA. Totally you know, made up. No. <laughs> there's always the positive and there's always the negative, right? Or there's always like the, 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 the other side. Um, so I think LA, it's easy for artists who move to LA, right? Or who are trying to, you know, chase the dream or go after their art or music. Or run from the police. Yeah, or run from the police or chase the diamonds. Yes. <laughs> whatever you want to say it is it, it gets confusing and hard because um you know la from the outside people think of like hollywood yeah. people think of the glam and glitz of things they think of you know fabulous red carpets and titles and all that stuff like celebrities and all that but if you're actually in it and you're working as a creative and you're you're an artist you're hustling every single day. I don't care if you're like just starting or you've already made it. Like I have amazing mentors 
um, that, you know, I talk to even, even in this place, like the heavyweights, you know, Jamie Jones, you know, Jack Kugel and Matt Wong, like all of them and, and other folks that I, I'm like grateful to work with, they are established legends. Okay. <laughs> they've done so many things. They, they've inspired the industry. They're the heavyweights. They are the heavy. Exactly. And even, and, and, you know, the heavyweights, Jamie, he comes from all for one. Do you know all for one? All for one, one for all. All for one. <laughs> so all for one, the band. Yes. Yeah, he knows. He knows. So um, they're I big mean, fans of the show. They're big fans. I know they're watching. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. So I mean, so you know, they've established you know themselves as like huge influential figures in LA and abroad internationally, and they're also always hustling. You know, like you gotta have that hustle mindset. So. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's very deceiving, I think. Like, the idea of L.A., Los Angeles is very deceiving. Um, but as an artist, like, it's really important to remember that, like, you got to hustle. And it's it's not that glamorous, actually, behind so all the So it's supportive stuff that you see. And, yeah. and good for creative energy, but mm -hmm. you also need to hustle really hard. Absolutely. You have to work extra hard where can i go and just not work that hard because in new york you gotta work pretty hard too and I'm, yeah of course I new mean, york i'm is about the, is that, that place. hustle but i'm really getting into like that nap life you know i do love naps actually yeah there's not enough i love napping. naps but I, I i love the idea of naps but when i try to nap i can't nap i know you can't think about napping. is that like the nap theory yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. But um where can we go for I mean there's plenty of places to chill and like do nothing. Runyon Canyon. Have you heard of that? Runyon Canyon. Runyon Canyon. So it's like a beautiful place you can go. It's it's a hiking trail. Um we do have mountains and hills. I actually I might have is that does it go up to like Griff Griffith's Griffith observatory? Yeah, it, I did that. I did that. That's an LA man on Look at that. That is cool. Yeah, no. I mean that's like going into the sixth dimension. Absolutely. Actually, there. whenever I feel like I need to get back into the sixth dimension and center myself, I like to connect with nature. Do right? some acid, and that's well, um, that's that's me personally. But but for the kids watching, playing with <laughs> playing with animals, and stuff. <laughs> touching the tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You so can feel the trees like soul. Yo. It's beautiful. Yo, I, I do that. Yeah. I do. <laughs> when I'm, no, I, I actually recommend this to you, actually. Whenever you feel uncentered or you feel like there's like stuff going on all over, you know, I, I feel that way all the time. The best thing I do, the, the thing that I recommend to all of you and you and everyone behind this camera, all, all, just go touch a tree. I'm serious. Like there's something about the tree that's just like root because if you look at it did you know that trees like you only see like 10 percent of the tree like the tree as a whole it actually has more underneath the ground you know I did not know the that. roots it's just like it, it just expands like miles and miles long so you know existential point of view when you feel you know cluttered or chaos within you you go touch like a nature thing like yeah a tree it's just like completely and trees are cool because they're like they're trees. just like very slow and steady yeah you know like if you watch plants and like very fast forward like time lapse yeah. they move like animals and stuff but you just like dude, they're just kind of like very slow mm -hmm. and calm and they've been there and they're rooted and grounded yeah. and connected to the earth and what, what, what what's next i mean you talked about i think in the summer mm -hmm. we'll get the music video is like ahead of the ep or is it an ep is it going to be an album mm -hmm. what's is there a title um yes there is a title and we'll find out um but we're releasing dimension it's a single and then the music video and yeah eventually i hope to i plan to release the ep and where can everybody follow you, listen to you now? Right now, um, I'm on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Music. So you can basically just search Azra, um, and then you'll be able to find it. Azra Dimension. And, and Instagram. Uh, yeah, and that's Azra Official? Yes. That is awesome. I'm really, really excited uh, to, to hear the music, mm -hmm. and hopefully... Uh, 
we'll we'll collaborate too. Yes. You know, I'm gonna out here on the West Coast and uh yeah, you gotta keep us all updated with everything coming out. Definitely. It's really yeah. cool. Thank you. Thanks for having me here and I'm Well thanks for that, having me here. I'm happy that you came, but thanks for interviewing me. Yes. Um it's always amazing to connect with you and Pop Dust and with everybody at Pop Dust. It's great. Yeah. All the viewers. And this is our uh inaugural West Coast interview. So, so yeah. I'm I'm very proud that you are you are the the first over here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh yeah, so thank you everybody check out Azra and her music and uh stay tuned. Stay tuned. Bye. <laughs>